All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we are working our way through chapter 15 in the AP Stats Modeling Our World curriculum. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about the general multiplication rule and independence. Um, and uh, we discussed this a little bit in chapter 14 already, uh, but we're going to kind of add on to this rule a little bit. So what we discussed in chapter 14 was that when two events are independent, we use the multiplication rule uh, in order to find the probability of P of A and B. So the probability that both A and B occur is the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay. Um, however, when events are not independent, uh, this doesn't work anymore uh, because when prob the event A happens, that uh, means that it is changing the probability of event B. Uh, and when it doesn't happen, that changes the probability of event B. So when things are not independent, there's a relationship between them. Uh, and uh, what, whatever happens with A changes B. So we, we make a slight alteration to the multiplication rule. Um, and you've actually already seen this multiplication rule change in the last video uh, that we did with chapter 15 when we were talking about conditional probability. Um, we rearrange that this formula uh, that you saw in the last video, which uh, was P of uh, B given A equals P of uh, A and B over P of A. Now, notice that if we multiply both sides by P of A, uh, the, those cancel, and we end up with P of A times P of B given A uh, equals P of A and, oops, <laughs> and B. So uh, this conditional probability rule that we talked about really is the general multiplication rule for when we have non-independent events. Uh, in this case, um, we take the probability of event A happening, and then we multiply that by the probability of uh, B, given that A has happened. And that gives us the probability of P of A and B. So let's look at how this uh, affects, and oh, I'm sorry, we could also flip that. Let's look at how this affects it in, in terms of when we're talking about independence um, to see if it, uh, events are independent here. So uh, we've talked about independence a lot in this course, uh, that two events, um, when one event does not influence the probability of the other, the events are independent events. Um, we've kind of looked at that a little bit when we were doing our tables uh, back in chapter three, I think, like right in the beginning of the course. Um, with this new notation, though, we can actually formalize a definition of what independence means now. So events A and B are independent whenever P of B given A equals P of B. So again, what this says is that the probability of B, given that A has happened, is the same as the probability of B. Meaning, knowledge of A is not changing the probability of B. And of course, this works um, the uh, opposite when it's A and B, uh, when it's A given B equals probability of A. So again, all of this de all this definition means is is that the probability of B doesn't change when we have information about A. So let's look at an example here. A survey found that 56% of college students live on campus. 62% have a campus meal plan, and 42% uh, do both or have both. So is living on campus and having a meal plan independent? Right. If I know that a student lives on campus, does that increase or decrease the probability of them having a meal plan? Um, we can check this to see if they're independent. So what we're looking for is does P of meal plan, given uh, living on campus, uh, the same as P of meal plan? Okay. So we need to figure out what these two probabilities are. Well, P of meal plan, we know. Uh, because the probability that they have a meal plan is 62%. So this is 0.62. And uh, we know what that is. 
Now, P of M given L, uh, it does not given to us in the problem, but we can use our formula that we learned uh, about conditional probability to figure that out. So P of uh, meal plan and uh, living on campus, I'm forgetting my, uh, my variables here, uh, over P of L or P of living on campus. And these numbers we do know because P of meal plan and living on campus is 0.42. And P of living on campus is 0.56. And so we need to do the division here to figure out then what P of M given L is. So that division makes this 0.75. Uh, so does P of meal plan given living on campus equal P of meal plan? No. So these are not independent. Uh, they are, their percentage is, again, far enough away now to decide that these are definitely not independent events. And again, now we do have this other problem of how far away does the percentage have to be before we call it not independent. And that's another question that we got to say, okay, wait, hold on. There's a lot of things we need to know before we can answer that, right? Um, so uh, the, if the percentages are different, then they're not independent. But the question of how far away does it have to be uh, before we call it not independent, that's, that's a question that we answer uh, later. Uh, in fact, in chapter 26, I believe it is, uh, when we're talking about... Um, hypothesis testing so uh, hold on that question right but as far as we can say right now if they're not the same it is not independent okay let's look at another example this time going back to that uh, uh, independence of the Super Bowl uh, excuse me the Super Bowl example that we had so is looking forward to the game independent of being female so what we're looking for here if we're trying to determine independence is does P of game given female equal P of female. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, P, P of game, right? Let's, uh, where's my erase button here? Uh, we want that to be the other way around. Oop. Back to that. Uh, sorry, that should be P of game. Right, because what we're saying is, is does the probability of the game uh, change given that we know that somebody is female? So, what's the probability of wanting to watch the game? Well, uh, we determine that that that's 479 out of 1,008. So, the probability that you want to watch the game is 4, 479 over 1,008, uh, which we can do uh, as a decimal if we like, and that would be. Uh, 0.475 and then we have to say well does that equal P of game given that you are female so remember uh, we have a condition being set that uh, we're female so I'm only really caring about this column um, so what percentage of females want to watch the game well that's 200 out of 516 um, and then we have to say well as a decimal uh, what would that be 200 divided by 516 gives us 0.39 uh, if we round so uh, are these independent well 0.39 definitely does not equal 0.475 so these are not independent events knowledge that a person is female uh, uh, gives us information lowers the probability that they are interested in watching the Super Bowl uh, therefore they're not independent events and we can see that with those probabilities all right, that's everything I've got for you this video. Uh, if uh, thank you, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.